Cool. Um, yeah. So um, this morning we wanted to talk about the possibilities to build a trading bot with Melon.js. So I walk you through um, how to do this. <laughs> you see, we built the trading bot. So we start with a simple thing. Um, you see, that's the market. So we have a price and time, and somebody places an order. Uh, overpriced, obviously, so um, it's not interesting. Then time goes by, and our assets in digital space, you know, they are really like jumping around. So this overpriced order at some point in time is profitable to take. So the simple thing that we want to do this morning is just take it, okay? I mean, yeah, maybe you uh, <laughs> wanted to have. Um, <laughs> a more like, elaborated strategy to how to exploit um, decentralized markets. But I mean, I, I don't want to go there and tomorrow is talk about how to prevent these exploitations. But for us, it's about hacking. So we can see the strategy that we had before also kind of a reverse liquidity provider. So we just take the orders that are in, in, in the market, so even if, if it's bad for the one that you um, that filed the order at the beginning, um, we still give him the asset that, that he wanted in the first place. So we're not that bad. It's not like really uh, yeah, an, an attack. So um, we had a small motivation to begin with, and then um, I will talk about some challenges. Then I go quickly through architecture. Then we look at some code, obviously, and at the end, I'm hoping to can show you a nice demo. So let's start with the challenges. So we, if you start working on a trading bot, and then you obviously get in touch with those nice technologies, JavaScript, I really like it. Web3.js, obviously, also. Truffle, also. And uh, Ethereum, also. And, but all of those, they have you know, their pitfalls. They're not that easy to work with. So you have stuff like this. Who knows how many whatever this is? It is 3.762 Ether. It, I mean, that was obviously. Please, we're here in you know, asset management. You should see this. But maybe it's also a little bit more Bitcoin or a little bit less digits. You, ne you never know. Uh, up until you, you kind of have an information what this number refers to. And that's a problem that we're facing every day, and we face, and we try, we, we try to solve it. Also, you know, these contract addresses. I mean, I don't know. It, it, it's hard to get knowing what's behind. Maybe one person in the room know what's behind this address. Maybe more. It's the Melon Token contract address. It was so obviously, no? And then next comes are my favorites. Transaction execution error. Bad instructions. Transaction was not processed in 240 seconds. Every day, those lovely errors appear on our screens. But fear not, young Padawan. For this, we have Melon.js. Melon.js tries to solve all these issues for you. It, it, it's here to cr create a great so-called developer experience so that it's, it's fun again to work with those technologies and you don't have to, to, to scratch your head that much and, and, and get crazy, you know? So let's go into architecture. As Travis um, explained before, we have the Melon protocol that's basically code that gets compiled uh, down to bytecode in the Ethereum um, virtual machine. So, but we are starting here. That beauty about the Ethereum virtual machine is that everybody can set up its own node and interact with the, with the smart contracts on the blockchain. And that's what you do through a node. But if you're not like liking to, to code in zeros and ones, like me, and um, then you need something like Web3.js that talks to this to this uh, Ethereum node and the Ethereum virtual machine in a in a kind of convenient way. But the the problem with um, Web3 is that it doesn't know about Melon protocol in general. So we build on top of Web3 like the Melon JS that that helps you to to develop. And furthermore, the Melon.js obviously knows about um, the Melon protocol. So we can do amazing things like running 
like preconditions. So we can know, for example, we know in Melon.js if it is allowed to invest in a fund or not. We don't need to go to the blockchain and, and, and you know, waste some gas for some simple stuff that we can know before. And that's all we do in Melon.js. We kind of make it easier. Furthermore, we can display then um, proper error messages so that you see um, yeah, it was just not allowed because you're not on the whitelist and not something like transaction execution error. On top of that, we build our IPFS frontend, which we'll uh, generate later present to you. We have our liquidity provider. You see, we eat our own dog food. <laughs> Your trading bot can also be built on top of Melon.js, and furthermore, you can build your white label um, portal to, to the asset management on, on the Melon protocol. How amazing is that? You don't even need to like have a big branding of us if, if you want to work with us. So, next step, obviously, is let's dive into code. So first, um, you need to install Melon.js. It's simple. So for those who know about NPM, they see it works like this. Then it gets installed, and after a while, you're there. But let's look actually into code. Um, need to start at the top. So this, if you want to look at Melon.js, uh, you start looking at the file that's called slash lib slash main.js. It, it kind of lists all our functions that we have for you, and you see stuff like assets. You see we have... Uh, calls that are um, constant methods, then uh, transactions that are non-constant methods that cost gas. We have contracts. If you really want to go there and get, get kind of an instance of the contract directly, you can do this too. And um, yeah, we have those helper functions, for example, like processable and to readable that makes these big numbers to readable stuff and vice versa, because you know, don't go with uh, your, your um, human numbers to the EVM. EVM doesn't understand this. It goes to data feeds. We have stuff for data feed management, exchange. It's more or less the same that you see in the uh, Mellon protocol participation. So you see you have all the, all the methods, all the, all the stuff you need to interact with the Mellon protocol in nicely named and um, easy to use methods that you just can fire up in your own trading bot. And also some utilities, maybe for the other developers, this is interesting maybe to look into. Uh, um, we have some utilities that help in general the, the work with the with the yeah with the blockchain smart contract. For example, Rush is just a, just simple utility to say if this transaction is not complete in 30 seconds, then I think it's not it's not been true because some transactions they just should be faster. And um, also trace that we will look at later. So to give you a little bit an understanding of how we write code in the front end, I want to just jump into this transfer to function. So we use flow types, so to have a type analysis. Then we, we have some imports. We, we, we follow a kind of functional programming style. You heard from Travis that uh, he's playing around with Haskell. You know, that's a good thing. Especially in JavaScript programming can be as functional as possible. Then we see, um, yeah, Simple stuff. I mean, even those people in here that cannot code maybe get out of this what's going on here. You know, we get the contract, we build some arguments together, we make uh, quantity processable, then we boost gas and, 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 and execute this transfer effectively, then we check for a log into, in, the, in the log if there, the transfer was executed, and if yes, return it true, if no, return it false. So, all those functions, the aim is that they are as simple as possible and as understandable as possible, because programmers are human beings too. So, the next thing is application of what, we, what we've sawn. Um, and then, this is the trading bot. Yeah, starts with some imports. And then, we set up Melon.js. We, we, we bring in an uh, instance of Web3, then we set up the tracer. The tracer is a, is a helper function that you can use to look into the internals of Melon.js. So you see, 
um, how much gas was um, calculated and and which was the error and, and which was the step that was fulfilled and where it was rejected. So you can use the tracer. Furthermore, the tracer is for us a utility also to hook the whole logging system into a proper uh, into a big logging. Um, service like uh, Sentry that we use. So you can easily have your trading bot like log into Sentry and, and, and you don't need to kind of attach to the console. It's furthermore important if you work with a decentralized front end or that, that, that's on different machines because you don't know if there is an error if you don't have these logging mechanisms. And then we initialize the, the man.js. So the trading bot, as I talked before, it starts simply by sending out some um, some messages about how many tokens we have, so that we know maybe it's not funded enough. And then with a simple function, get or create fund, so it creates a fund for the address if needed. And then has a kind of every block interaction. So what we do is more or less like on every block, um, we check the current state of, of the fund. So we, we see again what's the balance and what's the share price. And then we check the market. And on every block, we check the market. We go for all the active orders. We get the market price. And we compare these orders. And as soon as we see there is an order that is profitable, we take them. So we run through all them, wait for them, and uh, estimate the full cost in class of guys check if um, we should take the order or not, and then, um, yeah, in the end, we just execute it. That's it. So you see, it's a simple bot. And uh, because it's a simple, I think it is simple to do one more. I think you guys really know better ways to have profitable trading bots. And you are really invited to do this with um, Melon.js. Uh, you, you can go to the GitHub. And um, yeah, file box issues, come us to, to talk to us on Gitter. And we are really happy to help. I'm happy to help to see what, what you try to build with Melon.js. But I know you want to see it for real. That's why we're going to the demo. So the demo is more or less this, but in real. Okay, <laughs> so I stop here so we can a little bit walk into. So you see the, the, the bot starts and uh, he has his own address. Then we then the bot has, has some uh, K Ether and some Melon tokens and Ether tokens. And then he has a fund with an address. You can look this address up actually. Then uh, it, it waits for the first block, so it gets to the block. And then we see we have no Ether token yet because investing in the Melon fund is through Melons. And but 100 Melon tokens, that's already cool. And then it starts and, and looks at the orders. Now it is a little bit bad because it sees order that would have been profitable, but it has no Ether token. But um, yeah, it goes through them. If I would like run it longer, then it would kind of catch up some some. Um, uh, orders to, to buy Ether tokens. But that we will look at it because it, it runs since yesterday night on a server that we can go into the console of the server. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, one little thing is if you want to run your um, uh, trading bot on your own machine, you need to have your obviously your unlocked parity node running. So if you need help with this, we have also documentation online. So let's look at our running trading bot. So maybe you see here, it's already a share price of 1.096 and so on. That's good. And it, try, it, it goes through, it had, there, is, there is kind of a liquidity provider placing orders and the trading bot is kind of watching for profitable orders. And yeah, now and then it can take something. I think it will spend all its ether Right away, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's so far the Melon.js trading bot. Um, 
So the next steps, as I, as I told you before, um, yeah, play around with the melon.js. We will spin up a new competition soon, and there you can participate with your own bot. So, I mean, maybe you are better with other people clicking. And then you can come to our GitHub, come to our Gitter, file box, open pull requests, get involved, talk to us. We're really interested to hear what you want to build with melon.js, what you want to build with the melon protocol, and we're more than happy to help. So, and if you want to look at this presentation at some point, it's melon.js.m0.melon.protocol. That's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Simon.